Right, quickly, I need to get into this trade on USD Chef, okay? Uh, USD Chef, I'm going to take a buy. Now, I am very, 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 very late. In fact, I'll take, I'm going to take three trades, okay? I'm very late to the party on this one, okay? Basically, uh, I was having a quick trading session with some of the BD members. We've had some beautiful setups today, okay? Um... Gold, we had, um, well, I was eyeing up this trade here, but then I didn't take the trade, okay? So that was a buy on gold, but I didn't take it, didn't really like it. Euro USD, we had, uh, we had a nice little sell at the top up here, uh, whereas it was up here earlier, which was absolute beautiful, beautiful sell with the trend. Uh, GPUSD, we had, I'll tell you about GPUSD, we had nice little, we had nice little uh, buy here. Was it there? Yeah, it was. Nice little buy here. Okay, let me just make myself smaller so you can see. Okay, MACD had gone over salt. And this is what I say, right? When the binary show you bands are ranging, perfect. Okay, trades with the trend, price ranging, perfect. Trades against the trend, eh, not really worth the risk. Okay, you can get away with it. But if you're a beginner, you don't, you don't have a lot of experience just walk away okay if you feel all trades against the trend don't take it okay um we aussie us dollar a nice little buy there and you know what was cheeky is i was eyeing up this sell here literally about 10 minutes ago and i thought i'm not gonna take the trade we had a nice little buy here with the trend here against the trend that's the reason kind of maybe got a few pips out of that one but nothing really happened uh usd cad we had a nice little sell off this one earlier about 20 minutes ago, you can see I marked it up already. Uh, resistance area, USD Chef. Okay, USD Chef is the buys that I'm in. As you can see here, nicely into profit. I'm actually going to set a stop loss on this one. Uh, okay, because obviously it's equally important, not only about making profits, but about risking it as well. Uh, you don't want to be... Okay, so sick. we're going to go with, a just to be safe, we're going to put a 10 pip stop loss on this one. And take profit again. In fact, I'm going to set all of these as well. Okay. At the same time, we are going to uh, start to reduce the risk that we have here. So let me just set all of these trades at minus 10 pip stop loss. Uh, and what we'll do is we're going to set this one at the top at a 5 pip take profit. Done. We're going to set this one here at a 10 pip take profit. And we're going to set the last one here at mm, probably 12 pips okay so there you go there now this by the way if you wonder why this is a small account basically this is that kind of uh trading account that i well, actually in fact i set up a few trading accounts uh out of panic when my c trader account last month stopped working look and just to show you right look okay look my c trader account has or my c trader platform has stopped working still has stopped working i know a lot of you lot have reached out to me to try and fix it icy markets reached out to me but it still isn't working if anybody can perhaps connect to my computer and do it remotely that would be ideal but nothing works i literally look okay it loads up and then nothing happens i just click on it i click on the icon at the bottom of the screen and nothing happens at all. Um, so yeah, I've had to kind of make do with this kind of web version of CTrader. Since I've started the account, um, I've done quite well. I've averaged a 92% win ratio, 1% drawdown, uh, 106 trades taken, 98 winners, eight losses. Uh, yeah, so 98% win ratio, 1.1% drawdown, not a lot. Like I said, I'm, I, I only really trade this account on a YouTube video and I don't really, you know, try and do massive lot sizes. I, I, if, it, if you actually look at my other account, so let me get my phone. My other trading account, which I trade off my phone, I've actually got a buy on BTC and it is nicely in the blue, as you can see there, you I can't see. Uh, so currently buys on bitcoin i'm not saying bitcoin is going to go long okay don't take that as advice don't buy bitcoin but i just think we're going to start to pull back oh, hold on i just think we're starting to pull back we've come to this kind of nice little support level uh, and i think a few little uh, a few little scalps for a buy isn't going to hurt anybody um so usd chef okay let me explain to you the reason why i've took usd chef 
okay um, okay, so let's first of all have a quick look at this is the one minute time frame. Let's quickly have a look at the 15 minute charts. You can see, right, this nice hold on there. There we go, that's better. Okay, we are slightly against the trend on this one, but I like it because, hold on, where's, here we go, here, is because we've come up to this level just there. Okay, now this is what's, oh, I could probably bring it across even there as well. There we go. Okay is looking at the direction of the candlesticks, right? You can see what I see as well. Okay, it's against the trend, okay? You got this nice little trend down there. You got a pullback, you got a continuation. Now, normally I would say I wouldn't take this trade because, okay, looking at the candlesticks, it's against the trend, right? And I will slightly agree with you. Oh, that trade's gone nice into profit. Look at this, slowly going there. Some of these trades should start to close off now, which is, uh, which is good. Um, but the support line is being held, okay? And, and this is sometimes, as a trader, if you're trading support and resistance, you've got to look at support and resistance, a bit like a trampoline. If price comes down to a support level, right, it is likely to get a reaction from it. It's likely to bounce off it. Now, it's not going to go into an uptrend, right? I'm not interested in that. Just a small reaction from this level is enough for me to get my pips. Now, as you can see here, uh, you know what's annoying about Ctrader is it doesn't it doesn't set my oh it does set my pips okay here we go three point nine pips so we we're getting there four point five okay weirdly I don't know why it does that it doesn't tell me on here where my uh, where my pips are it just basically tells me where my stop loss and take profit is uh, but yeah nice little buy on there while we're there as well I can actually show you some of the results from the BD members uh so far today it's been phenomenal um hold on here let me just um load up my when it decides it's going to work okay here we go here okay um let me show you some of the results today a lot of bd members have been talking uh i said accordingly i said earlier that according to the bdrsi jpy is bullish and truly happened i caught 70 pips against a 1.6 pip sl Wow, that's pretty phenomenal. Um, probably my my position early, calling it a day today. Wow, nice little two hundred and ten pound profit made on that one. Look at that, beautiful that is. I mean, look at that USD sell, USD sell one point one lots, one hundred thirty pound, and then he's took he's closed some trades off at break even. Aussie USD zero point zero eight pips. Interesting. Some people have a weird way of money management, um, which is uh, good. Okay, here we go here. Done for today. Results from super RSI dot, uh, superior BD. Um, again, um, done for today. Results from BD. And again here, guys, my first trade for today, all hell Mogwai strategy. Everybody loves the Mogwai strategy. Um, and again here, Nice little sell on gold is almost and part of the fabulous BD. And you should know the BD is the best indicator in the world so far. Yeah, nice little sell on that one. Be I mean, look at that for a target. Look at that. Beautiful. I like seeing results like that. Not necessarily wins, but trades that have good money management. You know, trades with tight SLs, big tape profits. Uh, I mean, let's have a look at what's happening with C Trader. Okay, C Trader is kind of I mean, C Trader. Let's have a look at that trade. Okay, currently, okay, so we're pulling back. Let me go back to the one minute time frame on this one here, and let's see what's happening on this one. Let me load up the buy and destroy again. Okay, so, okay, so we've spiked right down to this support level here, which is good. That's good. I like that. Okay, we should. That rejection wick, let me just see that nice little rejection wick there. We should now be going up from this level. That rejection wick is a good sign that we're rejecting from this level, that this support line is being held. Okay, MACD gone over sold, Mogwai signal, you know the score by now. What I'll do is I'll pause the video and I'll come back very, very shortly. Oh my god, panic, panic, panic. I was literally just, is, is this recording? Yeah, I was literally just about to jump in the shower uh, and I heard my C trader go ping and I had to literally like, obviously you can't tell, but below me, I'm kind of half naked now to put this t-shirt this, uh, this on, literally run here. Um, 
So let's have a quick look, Dave. Okay, interesting. Um, so let me cover a quick look what's going on here. Okay, right. So we took this trade off the one minute time frame. Okay, now it's interesting here. Okay, first of all, good two good things that I want you to notice. First of all, our stop loss was in the right place. Notice how basically a stop hunt happened. Okay, price pulled up and then literally dropped and then shot off again. This is why we always put our stop loss below or above support and resistance level. And this is exactly about what I mentioned earlier, if I can remember, if I even said it, about when you're in a trade, it's about managing that trade as well. Okay, putting your stop losses and entry points in the right place. Um, and this is a prime example, okay? You know, if you had your stop loss too tight, you would have got stopped out. In fact, what is our stop loss on this? Um, okay, 10 pip stop loss, 10 pip take profit. I had another one set at what, five pips? And then I've got another one set at uh, 15 pips, if I remember correctly. Okay, let me have a look at this one. So currently 5.3 pips on this trade here. 5.7, 5.8, here we go, here we go. We're, we're going up slowly. Okay, let's have a quick look at the, um, let's get rid of the binary destroyer. Let's have a quick look at the 15 minute charts. Oh, look at that. Look at that beautiful rocket up from that uh, support line. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And that prime example, how the binary destroyer works perfectly around support and resistance levels. If you can understand the levels, you know, and you can see support and resistance and you're confident enough to draw them, well, you know, the binary destroyer will go hand in hand with one another. You know, if you get a Mogwai signal, it's likely to be around a support and resistance level. So let's load up the binary destroyer back at the one minute time frame. Let's have a refresh to see if we need to close off any of these trades off early. Um, so load up the binary destroyer. Okay, so we're slowing down at this level at the minute. And the reason why we're slowing down at this level here is because we've come straight up into this area of resistance just there. You can see that there. Now, you might be able to see this better off the 15-minute charts. Okay, yeah, you can see this level just here. Okay. Okay, so now we need to make a decision. Do we close these trades off early or do we reduce the risk? Okay, so let me show you what I'm going to do. We've already got one trade that is locked in in profit. Now, bear in mind, Forget the profit here, okay, because it's such a tiny, small account, you know, it's like one pound 30, okay, it's nothing. But the principles here remain the same. We've got one trade that's already closed off nicely into profit. In fact, what are these sitting at now? Okay, so they're sitting at almost, yeah, around five pips in profit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to close off one of these trades now. I'm going to close off this top one here, okay? So now we have broke even, okay? I've closed two trades off at five pips, okay? So both trades now, those two trades together have made me 10 pips, okay? This trade here has a 10 pip stop loss, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reduce that risk on that one. I'm gonna go reduce it to five pips and I'm going to, I'm just gonna leave it at 12 pips. In fact, yeah, I'll leave it at 12 pips, okay? So you can see what I've done now, okay? Is that I've took three trades. One of them hit five pips. The other one hit five, you know, six pips. The other one hit six pips, closed it off. Okay, I banked some profit. This trade here now is pretty much risk free. Okay, if I lose this trade, I'm losing five pips. Okay, but it doesn't really matter because I'm still up 10 pips. Okay, if this trade goes off and hits my take profit at 12 pips, I made a nice little 22 pip profit from this little scalp of the one minute time frame. This is pretty much how we trade, or this is how we stay consistent, right? This, what I'm showing you, takes experience. Now, most traders would normally just take one trade. They would have different take profit levels. You know, they'd have target one, they'd have target two, they'd have target three, or they would move their trailing, they'd bring a stop loss to break even, or uh, use the trailing stop loss and lock in those profits, or they would uh, close off 10%, 50 or 60% of their position. As you can see here, price is pulling back slowly. I'm not really that bothered at the minute. If we go off and hit, you know, our 12 pips, it's a nice little win. We've already made profit on this trade. 
And looking back now, it was a nice little profit. Okay, as you can see here, if we just went for a nice little five pip scalp, would have it it would have made it easily. In fact, I entered this trade very late. You know, if I entered the trade here, we would have pretty much hit five pips. I mean, uh, let me just have a quick look. If, as soon as that TCA line turns green, is there? Yeah, so, I mean, literally, we would have hit five pips, and I entered this trade a little bit late. See, price starting to pull down now. MACD starting to go overbought. So, we could start to pull back now, but whatever the case is, it's risk-free. That's the Binance Show on Trading View. Um, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, drop me an email at thebinanceshow at gmail.com.